Roderick Jones responds to getting benched. Russell Wilson gets the game ball, even though he didn't play. And we got to talk about potential receiver trade targets that the Pittsburgh Steelers could and should be looking into. Let's start with Broderick, because we saw yesterday wasn't his best outing. And the Steelers went to this game having the mentality that we're going to be rotating right tackles. There were talks throughout the week that Troy Fawatanu, the rookie that the the rookie tackle that we just drafted in the 2023 NFL draft, was gonna get a chance to start over Broderick, even though Broderick is more proven. Started at right tackle for a good majority of last year. Uh, is a year into this league compared to Fawatanu, who's just a rookie. But Broderick also has his own pedigree too. We traded up in the 2023 draft to get him 13th overall traded up two spots. So we had this mentality of, okay, Fawatanu, even though you were hurt these last two, three weeks, there's a chance we're just going to start you because we feel like even though you had a pretty bad preseason for the most part, I mean, you were only out there for a couple series and was getting cooked by Daniil Hunter and then you got hurt. So when you were out there, it wasn't pretty. And then you haven't been available for almost a month at this point. The talk was, e even though that's that's the whole case revolving around Fawatana right now, that's the context. We're still going to maybe just start you over Broderick Jones in week two. Even though Broderick played, I thought, pretty decent in week one in Atlanta over at the right tackle spot. He's the more proven commodity up to this point, at least in the regular season, because Broderick himself didn't have that good of a preseason. But that's what we were talking about. If I was trying to potentially start, and you know my take on it. I was like, you know what? This is interesting. This is weird. I don't have a grand case against it because I feel like Fautanu is our long-term right tackle, so it doesn't hurt us to get him in there sooner rather than later. It's just very curious as to why we had Broderick Jones taking snaps over at right tackle when Fautanu should be our long-term right tackle when we know we want Broderick Jones over at the left side. So we just should have had him over competing at the left side with Dan Moore for all the offseason instead of taking the snaps at right tackle. But I digress. Um, instead of that, instead of us just having Fautanu be the guy making the decision, that it's going to be five time over Broderick Jones this game, even though it's kind of weird how we handled this. We're just going to stick to our guns and go with it. No, they said we're going to rotate the two, which is, in my opinion, probably the stupidest decision that you could have made. They said that literally, what was it, hours before kickoff? I saw the report by Dulac. That the plan is that we're going to rotate five time and Broderick Jones at right tackle. Huh? Just pick a guy and stick with him. If the guy's not playing good, then you could rotate in the other guy. Bench the guy that's not playing good and put in a guy to try to provide a spark or switch things up. Because in this game, Fautano actually, we, we went with Fautano to start. He played good the first two series. And for whatever reason, we wanted to put Broderick Jones out there. We we stuck to what we said, and we're going to rotate the guys. And Roger Jones went out there in the third series, and it was a disaster. We benched him and put Fabitano back out there immediately, and he played the rest of the game and played good. Played good. I think PFF graded Fabitano as the best offensive lineman in the game. Fabitano was very solid for us. But I think as fans from the outside looking in, I think it's fair to ask, what does Roger Jones think about all this, man? What does Roger Jones think about being our guy last year at right tackle, playing well at right tackle for us last year, and then playing in week one against Atlanta as our starting guy and also playing good, but then in week two getting benched for a rookie? What does he think about all this? So he had some things to say after the game, and he was asked if he was frustrated. And he said, not really. But 
if I'm not starting, I really don't feel like I should be playing. It's not really a big factor for me. He goes on to just, I guess, talk about what's needed from him going forward. And, you know, what's his mentality as it relates to the team and what they may ask him to do. He says, no, I didn't. I wasn't really too much worried about it. I'm just trying to come in and do the best I can for the team. At the end of the day, no matter what, no matter what it is they need me to do, I'm trying to do it. So they come up with a great game plan. I just try to stick to the script as best as possible and do what I do. Jones said via Post Gazette Sports on YouTube. I think he handled this well. I think he handled this actually perfectly. Said he's not frustrated, but also would like some clarity on a week in and week out basis. Like, bro, let's not play this whole game of, yeah, he's going to go out there for two series, then you're going to put me out there for two series. Just, just start the guy who you think is going to be better. I'm a man. I can handle it. I think that's essentially what he's saying here. You're not going to hurt my feelings or anything. If you want to go with Fautano, do it. And that's clearly what the Steelers wanted to do in this Denver game. They wanted to go with Fautano. They wanted to go with the rookie over the more proven guy and Broderick Jones. For whatever reason, Steelers must have really saw some awesome things from Fautano in training camp and OTAs behind the scenes that we weren't privy to because, as I said, Fautano's preseason – wasn't really good. He was out there for a couple series, got cooked, and then got hurt. Was unavailable. Whereas at least Broderick Jones, his preseason, maybe you could argue was worse when he was out there. At least we got to see him in a game that mattered for the 2024 season in week one against Atlanta, and, and he was good. And then he has some of that rapport built up with the organization, with the team from last year and the way he played like the final eight, nine weeks of, of last season. But if you want to go with Fautanu over that, I think Broderick, what Broderick's saying is if you want to go with Fautanu over what you know you got in me, that's fine. That's completely fine. Let's just not play this whole musical chairs game. And then he also said, though, if the Steelers still want to do that, I'm up for it, though. Like, whatever the team needs me to do, ultimately, I'm up for it. But at least you guys know where I stand on going in middle of the game at right tackle and going back and forth between who's playing at that position. Now the question is, what do we do with Broderick Jones? Do we bump him over to left? I Actually, he's probably just going to be our swing guy. Now that I think about it, he's going to be the backup left and the backup right tackle. So if Dan Moore goes down with an injury, Broderick Jones is going to be over at left. But I'm, I guess what I'm asking is, what are we going to do with him at practice now? Are we going to have him take half the reps at right tackle whenever he's in there and half the reps at left tackle? I'm assuming he's not going to be getting work with the ones, but whenever he's getting work with the twos, is it going to be just exclusively at left tackle or is it going to be exclusively at right tackle? Are we going to still play the versatile game with Broderick and have him do like a 50-50 split? I don't know. I say just get him over to left tackle. That's what we drafted him to play. Let's just get on and get over with it. Uh, next, I want to get to some Justin Fields, Russell Wilson talk. Russell Wilson got the game ball yesterday. Justin Fields says, I think we all know Russ kind of got the dirty last year. I know he wishes that he could have played in this game. It's awesome to get this win for him. And he calls the game ball a petty game ball. So Russ, even though he wasn't playing yesterday, he still gets awarded the game ball, which I'm good with. I think it goes to show that we got a team here. It's not necessarily about individuals. Like, clearly, someone who played in yesterday's game could have got the game ball, right? T.J. Watt, hell, even Justin Fields. Corey Trice getting his first career interception. He could have got a game ball. DeMonte Casey closed it out with a pick. Like, there's, there's numerous guys that we could have given the game ball to that actually played in the game. But for the team to be thinking about Russ, even though he wasn't out there, give him the game ball. Like, hey, we were thinking about you for this one. We were, we were trying to win this one for you. I think it goes to show, like, we're, we're building some chemistry here within the locker room. We're building some camaraderie. And I think Justin Fields is a big part of that. You see, I mean, you could see his facial expression in this picture here, but if you listen to him talking about Russ getting the game ball, like, he was smiling. He was 
he he had a, a very positive tone to it, like, yeah, we, you know, we did this for Russ. Like we were looking out for Russ. Russ is a guy that I look up to. So even though Justin Fields was out there, he's he's the guy right now while Russ is on the sidelines, he's still thinking about other people on the team, like a Russell Wilson, giving his respects. And you notice too how Fields is handling a lot of these interviews and the questions about if he feels like he should be the guy, if he feels like he's done enough to earn the job up to this point. He's just talking about, I'm doing whatever I can to help this team win games. I feel confident in everything, but it's whatever the team needs me to do. I'm not looking into all that. That's above my pay grade on who's going to be next week's starter, who's going to be the starter going forward. I'm just taking it a day at a time. Like He's handling this perfectly. He's handling this like a leader. He's handling this like a franchise quarterback should. And you guys know my opinion on it. I talked about it in yesterday's post game. I think whether or not Russ is healthy, Field should be playing in week three. And when you think about the game and how it played out more in detail, particularly that first half, man, particularly the first half. So first years, we go three and out. I think part of that was due to just lackluster play calling, conservative play calling. Let's just call it what it was. I, I didn't think we were really doing anything dynamic in that first series. But then the next three series, think about what Justin Fields did. And I'm going to ask this again. What is Russell Wilson doing better than Justin Fields in those three series? Because you can make an argument if it wasn't for some of the outside stuff and the, the, the negativity surrounding Justin Fields with the penalties. We should have been up 21 nothing going into half. What's Russell Wilson doing better than 21 nothing? I get we we're talking about hypotheticals, coulda, woulda, shoulda. But we only had the ball for four series yesterday. First one was three and out, but then the next three series, think about it. What is Russell Wilson doing better than Justin Fields? We scored a touchdown on that second series. And I feel like a big part of us getting that second series touchdown was due to Justin Fields picking apart the defense. Like it wasn't exactly just or it wasn't only about his improvisation and, and his athleticism he was getting the ball out quick he was looking like in a way ohio state version of justin fields but then he also had the scramble out to the left where he picked up like 10 15 yards picked up a first down on a completely dead play where jonathan cooper was getting to the quarterback was getting to justin fields in like the snap of a finger russ ain't doing that uh fields also made that nice back shoulder throw to Darnell Washington in the corner of the end zone. So he was a big part of why we scored in that second series. Third series, that was the Broderick Jones series with all of the penalties and stuff. So if Russell Wilson was out there, are we scoring a touchdown on that series? Because in my opinion, Justin Fields did everything he needed to do to get us in position to put up some points. He had that roll out to the right, chucked it down the field to Pickens, Dropped it right in the bread basket. We were going to be, what, five yards away from the end zone there? But the play gets called back for holding. We were just behind the sticks that whole series there. I think that was a three and out too, right? Technically a three and out, but we maybe we had more plays than a three and out. But it was just all those penalties that were getting us behind the sticks, getting us behind schedule. So what was Russell Wilson doing better on that series? And then the last one right before half, we had a touchdown. We, we, we literally had a touchdown called back. By a bad penalty call. Was Russell Wilson doing anything better there than what Justin Fields did? Second half, yeah, I think Fields could have played better, but I think, I'll reiterate it, the offense just went with a more conservative approach with the play calling and trying not to mess up. And I think part of that was due to more of the penalties that were getting called against us, where, you know, we're, we're getting put in like second and 20s. Why take these grand risks when we're up? two scores and the defense is playing absolutely lights out. I would have liked to step on the gas. I think there were times in the second half, at least early on, we were trying to, but then the penalties would get us moving backwards. And then I think we just leaned into, let's not make the mistake because a pick here could really set us back or give some momentum back to the Broncos. Another question I have with Fields and Russ too, at this point, we're two games in, still a short sample size. But who's more proven in a Steeler uniform? 
we get Russell Wilson's more proven in the NFL, but who's more proven in a Steelers uniform? And you could even go back to training camp in a way. We get that Russ didn't do anything to lose the job, but that's because Russ wasn't really out there that much. He was out for pretty much the first two weeks of training camp and then was limited throughout the third week. First game of preseason, didn't do much. And I admit it, he was at least a little bit more steady than what Justin Fields was in that preseason game. Uh, who was that against? It was the second one. That was against the Bills. Fields was a little bit more up and down. But Russ, it's not like we really did that much on offense with Russ out there. At least he was steady. He wasn't putting the ball in harm's way like Fields was in that preseason game. And then the last one, he had a nice drive. He had that really nice throw to Pickens on the third and 13. Hands it off to Correll Patterson. We score a touchdown. He was done for the day. But I thought Justin Fields improved in that third preseason game. So that's really all we got from Russ is limited work in training camp and, what, five or six series in preseason. That's all we have from him in a Steeler uniform. Up to this point, Justin Fields in training camp, he was working majority with the ones. Those first three weeks while Russ was hurt and limited, Fields was working with the ones. He was working with the ones in the first preseason game. And then we get to see him in actual games that matter, though. So as I'm even talking about training camp and preseason, at the end of the day, that stuff really doesn't matter when you start to get tape on regular season games. Because that's what really matters up to this point. Because after the regular season, the playoffs are what really matters and so on and so forth. But Right now, how is Russell Wilson even more proven? How like how how do you necessarily feel more comfortable, like automatically more comfortable that Russell Wilson is going to do a better job than better job than Justin Fields the next game or whenever Russell Wilson is fully healthy? How do you feel that confident? How how do you know that it's that much of a guarantee up to this point? Because we haven't seen Russ out there in the Arthur Smith system. We haven't seen Russ out there with Pickens, with the offensive talent that we got right now, with this offensive line. What makes you think Russell Wilson automatically is going to do better than what Justin Fields has done these first two weeks? I don't think you can automatically say that. I don't think you can, particularly in yesterday's game where there was some pressure on Justin Fields. There were some plays where he had to roll out and – make some things happen on his own when things were crashing down against him. Like, you got to think, both of these dudes are both new to this team, this organization, and it's for a reason. Like, I think Russ's years in Denver, his first one, he was hurt, he was banged up. That's why it was pretty dismal. But it, last year, yeah, you could you could argue one way or another, underrated, overrated whatever but like there's a reason he's here denver wanted to move off of him and honestly it's looking like that was a mistake up to this point that they moved off of him because bo nix really ain't looking like he's it but anyway there's a reason he's here for one million dollars right there's a reason justin fields is here and he got traded for a six round pick so i don't think it's this thing where russ is completely above reproach and no matter what he has to be the starter when he's fully healthy we've seen it done to more decorated quarterbacks we've seen it done to quarterbacks that have a better track record on their given teams i brought up uh, i think it was the tony romo dak prescott scenario from what well, i guess at this point that was like what 10 years ago right dak prescott he gets in there his rookie year tony romo was hurt now, there was a bigger sample size with Dak. I think he ended up winning, what, like seven or eight games for the Cowboys or went like seven and one, six and one in his first however many starts. So there was more of a sample size up to that point. But that was Tony Romo. Tony Romo, you know, four-time Pro Bowl for the Cowboys, has moments, is the guy that the Cowboys paid to be their franchise guy. They stuck with Dak. Um, the 49ers, remember with Alex Smith and Kaepernick? Alex Smith was winning games for the Niners. Alex Smith, he was playing good when Harbaugh got there. You know, winning playoff games, like some clutch performances. 
but he gets hurt for a little time period and Harbaugh sees what Kaepernick's able to do. And that is win games, but have a higher ceiling, have a higher upside. And they ultimately stick with Kaepernick. They go to the Super Bowl that year and almost win that. I think this is similar, dude. I think this is very similar. Like Fields is showing you what his floor can be. And that is, I can I can game manage this. I didn't necessarily show that I could do that with the Bears. I could show you highlights. I could show you the ups and the downs. I could, I could show you like a ceiling, but then I'd show you a pretty bad floor with the Bears. He's showing me some new stuff here. He's showing me that he can have a higher floor. He can protect the ball, at least manage the game, keep us in it for the majority of it, no matter what. He, he could do that. Protect the ball and let the defense do their thing. That's at least the floor, but I saw the elite traits on display yesterday. We saw them in glimpses in the first game at, in Atlanta, but I think we even saw it more yesterday of, man, like this this type of throw, this type of athleticism, this type of talent, this isn't common. These type of plays that Fields are making, like this isn't something you just overlook. So... Yeah, I think uh, winning buys you time, and that's what Justin Fields is doing as the starting quarterback for the Steelers. It buys you time while you and the offense can get things together and develop and maybe even show what the ceiling and the upside can be while you're in there. I say stick with Fields, man. I say stick with them, no matter if Russ is healthy or not. But I'm guessing Russ isn't even going to be good for this week i don't even think russ is going to be available anyway so we're going to see justin fields for another one here against the best opponent we've played we're going to be playing thus far this season in the la chargers excited for that i say stick with him and if he has a similar performance to what he did this week or what he did in atlanta I mean, I'd argue if he had a similar performance to what he did in Denver, maybe we have more points on the board because we have less penalties. I think the reason we didn't have more points on the board was actually due to the penalties, not due to Justin Fields. So if Justin Fields replicates what he did in Denver, maybe we have 21 points, 24 points. Because I think Fields took a step up from that from that Atlanta game to the Denver game. The stats aren't necessarily going to show it. The, the final score isn't necessarily going to show it. But if you watch the game – and saw the plays that Fields was making, there was some more dynamic stuff than what we saw in Atlanta. Let me check in with the chat before we get into some of these receiver trades. See who's tuning in. Big shout out to the chat. Big shout out for everyone stopping through. Dre Jones, one to one agrees with me, says he looked better than game one. Cross and AZ, 520 agrees with me. It looks like we got some people that know ball in the chat that just doesn't look at the box score. Says he definitely was a step up. Lord Dre 10, what's your take on Broderick not playing on the left side? Eh, I'm not the biggest fan of how we handled it, to be honest. G Danks 84 asks, when does Roman Wilson get snaps? Hopefully this week against his former coach at Michigan. Uh, T Greek says Harbaugh says Lamar is the greatest quarterback to play the game. LOL. Yeah, didn't he say that in the offseason? <laughs> yeah, that's that's cap. That's fake news right there. Clawson AZ520. Why does Russ suit up on the inactive list? Because we can. It's that third quarterback rule. It doesn't take up a roster spot. So why not? If it really comes down to it. Maybe we could get Russ out there in a limited capacity. He could take snaps and hand it off or take some snaps in the shotgun to try to get us out of a stadium with a win. Because you got to figure at that point, Fields is out and Kyle Allen's out, and, it, and it's at some point in the second half. Russ being out there in whatever capacity, uh, you know, at a 60% capacity, 70% capacity, is better than who would be our quarterback at this point. Gentry's not here anymore. At least Gentry played quarterback in high school was like a five-star recruit as a quarterback back then i don't even know who our quarterback would be man <laughs> but yes that i think that would be a better option than whatever option d would be whatever the fourth option would be uh russ as the third option is better 
even at 60%, 70%, even with him being a little hobbled. Trey Jones, one two one, ask, could Herbert miss our game? There's no way. There's no way. I know he got banged up against Carolina, but he went out there the next series. Like, he went right back out there. I think that's just smoke and mirrors. G Danks 84 has a counterpoint. It looks like to me talking up fields. He says, I think Russ's experience in decision making is better, but since our receiving core and O line is an elite, Fields gives us the run advantage. Okay. So the first part of that statement. Yeah, I think I don't I don't think that's far off. Actually, no, I think in a way we kind of agree. The thing is, I think Fields has shown his decision making is on point. <laughs> At least for 2024, his decision making in these first two games, I think has been pretty damn good when we've asked them to be a pocket passer when we've asked them to like pick apart the defense from a passing standpoint he's been able to do that when he's needed to tuck and run and improvise he's done that he hasn't thrown any balls in harm's way like that he's, he's thrown a ball that's maybe contested where it's up to the receiver to make a play but he hasn't thrown one right at the defense's helmet or right at the defense's chest I think his decision making has been good. But yes, if you want to go historically, yes, you could say Russell Wilson's decision making is better. And the, you know, the experience that he can bring, particularly like late in games, that type of savviness, you, you could rely on with Russ. But in a Steeler uniform, from like a, a complete game standpoint, how are we guaranteeing Russ is automatically going to be better? And the stuff that we could say that we feel better about with Russ, the decision-making, and maybe that fourth-quarter stuff, the clutch stuff, I'm willing to give Fields another chance, another week. Let him increase his sample size to see if he's capable of doing that type of stuff. And I think so far with the decision-making, he's getting there for sure. We we haven't had to see him do a game-winning drive or a fourth-quarter comeback just yet. But – I'm willing to let it play out and give Fields that opportunity to see what he can do in those moments. That's what I'm interested in because we are, no matter how you want to spin it, spin it we're winning games with him being out there. So in my opinion, that buys him time. That buys him more opportunities. 